Well, good morning, everybody. And welcome to worship. My name is Ed Shenick. I'm the lead pastor here at Monroeville United Methodist Church. And on behalf of our staff and all of our congregation, we want to welcome you to this time of worship on Pentecost Sunday. Today is the birthday of the church, the day we celebrate when the Holy Spirit came and moved in the disciples and empowered them to become the church that has been passed down to us today. And so as we celebrate that time, we'll be breaking bread, sharing communion, and, uh, and just celebrating the gift of God's presence that is with us. So we're glad you're here, and we're glad that you're joining us online. If you're on, joining us online, feel, feel free, please, to participate in all the different areas of, of our worship this morning, uh, especially during prayer time. If there are those that you would like us to be in prayer for, uh, simply put their name into the chat, and our prayer chain will pick those names up after the service, and we will send those out and be praying for your loved ones or the situation that you are facing all the way through the week. Uh, we will be celebrating communion, and for those online, we invite you to be to a time of prayer and just a time of knowing and feeling God's presence as God is with you wherever you are during that time, uh, because there is nothing that separates us from the love of God. Amen. Um, as we uh, are working through our time in the service, if you're here, if you would do me a favor and uh, sign those little pads on the inside of the pew and send them down so that uh, we can uh, check, check whatever boxes are appropriate to you, we're real grateful that you've been doing that, and it's helped our office staff tremendously. Thank you for that. Um, I also want to lift up just a couple things. Last week, I had mentioned that there was a Monroeville Interfaith Ministerium. Uh, we're part of the MUM, MIM. MIM, MUM is part of MIM, uh, our interfaith ministerium here in Monroeville. And there is a, uh, a pamphlet they have put together of prayers and meditations in the time of tragedies. We have had an awful lot going on in our world over these past several weeks. And this is a prayer and meditation that's done from all different religious perspectives of our Monroeville community. Um, there are a couple that are available out on the, uh, if you're going out the doorway there, they're on the little pulpit or the, the lectern thing that's on the side there on, the, on your left. Um, also, Betty sent this out on email for us. If you're not able to get a hold of those, let us know, and we can either email a copy of that to you or we can run some more copies if, uh, if there aren't enough. But it is a beautiful piece, and I found it very, very helpful. Uh, please take a moment to look through our announcements in the bulletin and online. If you have a copy of those, if you can pull those up on our website, there's a lot going on. Uh, next week, we move to our summer schedule, so that we'll be meeting in the park at 9 o'clock, and then we'll have an 11 o'clock service here. Uh, and we are invited to come and join us out at Monroeville Park West and Pavilion 3. Also, information and sign-up is in there for our Vacation Bible School. Uh, we're putting together a float for the uh, 4th of July parade. There's an opportunity to get involved with that. There's a wonderful craft show that's being put together, and there's a lot of good information about that as well. So please take a look at those um, uh, in your bulletin and, and get involved because there's a lot of great stuff going on. Along with that, there is a whole little series in there on our outreach committee, ways that we can make a difference to those in need, and they are looking for your help and your support. All of those are just simple ways that we can make a difference in people's lives. So please take a look at those, get involved. Um, as we begin our worship service, we do have an announcement this morning. I don't think anybody else is leaving, so this is more about what's happening afterwards. I just wanted to give you, so you could take a breath on that one. It's been a rough couple of weeks. Go ahead, Larry. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. Uh, as most of you know, um, today is also the day when we as a congregation uh, are gathering to express our thanks to this gentleman right here, and that's going to happen immediately after the service uh, in Fellowship Hall. Um, I know there was an email out there about reservations so we could get a count, but please know everyone is invited, whether you've made any reservations or not, it's open to everyone. And uh, normally Pastor Ed greets everybody at the door here, but today we just go straight back to seating in Fellowship Hall. We'll have a brief program and presentations, and then everyone will have a chance to uh, uh, express their thoughts to Pastor Ed. So thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you, Larry. I appreciate that. Um, and just for those folks who may be online and where the comment from of transitioning, this is a time in the Methodist Church where bishops reappoint. And so there's been a reappointment time. Nobody's leaving mom. It's just a sense point of transing, transitioning um, uh, of pastor leadership. And uh, um, in another couple of weeks, um, a good friend of mine, um, Kelly Smith, will be coming here as your lead pastor, Reverend Kelly. And you are going to be very blessed by her. 
So um, are you guys ready to worship? Then let us all rise and let us join together in our call to worship. We have come to celebrate the birthday of the church. We have come to celebrate Pentecost and to open ourselves to God's spirit that it might fill us. Oh God, help us to put our selfish desires aside and direct our lives fully, just as it has filled churches and people throughout the ages. Teach us to be your church and your people. Amen. Thank you. Lovely. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have a Pentecostal kind of offering for you today. And if you'd like to sing along, whether you sing along in body or mind or spirit or heart, uh, it does go like this. <laughs>
Loving God, in the grace of Christ, you come and dwell in us. Do so now. Lift our hearts as we break bread together to remind us of your grace, your love for us, and your love for the world. And to send us into your world to share that love with all we meet. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Please be seated. And kids, come on up. This is your time. Just you? Anybody else want to come up? Come on. Hi. I'm Amanda. What's your name? Franny. Franny. All right. Well, we're happy to have you up here. Come on and, and join us. All right. I got something cool in my hand. What is this? It is a fan. It's a fancy, it's a fancy fan. It's Olivia's fan. She's letting me borrow it. She's much better with it than I am. Apparently, I don't know how it works. Okay. Why do you think I have this fan? Because I'm hot. Well, it might be a little warm in here. Yeah? What else? What do you think? Are you warm? <laughs> does it feel good? Yeah, it feels nice. Well, uh, we're talking about Pentecost today, and that's the day when the Holy Spirit came down and helped the disciples to know who God is in a deeper way. And in the Bible, the Holy Spirit is talked about as a wind, right? Can you feel a little bit of wind, right? Yeah. And so the Holy Spirit, when, when the Holy Spirit came down on everybody, the big wind blew, bigger than I could make with this thing, okay? But a huge wind blew, and there were, and, and there were tongues of fire, around it was very it's a very weird story but the holy spirit came down and suddenly all the disciples could speak different languages and people could hear it in their own language languages that they didn't know they knew and this wind blew through and helped the disciples to know that god was still with them and guiding them and we still have that holy spirit today so whenever you feel a wind on your face, outside or maybe with a fan inside, think about how the Holy Spirit is, is like that wind that comes into your life and helps guide you closer to the heart of God. All right, And that's cool because God gave us that gift so we know that God's always with us. Can we do that? Can we think about that? Okay, let's pray. Uh, Lord God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit, uh, which helps us make good decisions and guides us closer to knowing who you are. And so, Lord, as we think about um, just the, the slight wind that we may feel on our face at times or um, whenever we feel that we're all alone, remind us that your spirit is with us, guiding us, and teaching us. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right. You can go back to your seats. Okay, now we're going to switch to the older, a little slightly older kids. If you are a graduate and you're here, come on up front. All right. 
So we have a few here. There are more in your listed in your bulletin uh, on that yellow sheet. Um, but we have Tyler Jackson. Okay, Tyler, and where are you heading to next? Uh, Slippery Rock. To do what? For early child education. All right. <laughs> I have a friend who works in the finance department there, so. <laughs> I don't know why you would need to talk to her, but you could, okay? All right. I'm Robert, I'm going to IUP for cybersecurity. Okay, Robert's going to IUP for cybersecurity. Hi everyone, I know I graduated like a few, not too long ago, but I'm Skylar S29, graduated from Gateway High School. It's not too far from here, so it was really awesome. It was super hot that day too. <laughs> I was sweating. And what are you, what are you doing I next? I am going to CCAC for one year, and then my last three years, I am going, I actually got accepted into Clarion. All right, so <laughs> Skylar going to Clarion. All right. Um, can we pray for these uh, graduates? I'm going for nursing. Nursing, nursing. okay, all right. All right, Lord God, we are grateful for um, these young people in front of us that uh, we have been able to care for for a, a short period of time. And so, Lord, we just pray for them as they go to the next phase of what you have in store for them, that they know they do not walk alone and that they have a community of people back here in Monroeville that love them and are there to support them and care for them in any way that we can. And, Lord, that uh, they have a big God who has set big dreams in their hearts. And uh, Lord, you will see those dreams come to fruition one way or another. Uh, and uh, we are just grateful that you let us care for them uh, in the time that we had. And uh, Lord, we just lift them to you now, trusting them into your loving arms, uh, knowing that um, you can do so much more than we could ever do for them. And uh, we love you, Lord, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Romans, <clears throat> the eighth chapter, verses 12 through 17. The word this morning comes from the message. So, don't you see that we don't owe this old do-it-yourself life one red cent? There's nothing in it for us, nothing at all. The best thing to do is give it a decent burial and get on with your new life. God's spirit beckons. There are things to do and places to go. This resurrection life you received from God is not a timid, grave-tending life. It's adventurously expectant, greeting God with a childlike, what's next, Papa? God's spirit touches our spirits and confirms who we really are. Father and children, and we know we are going to get what's coming to us, an unbelievable inheritance. We go through exactly what Christ goes through. If we go through the hard times with him, then we're certainly going to go through the good times with him. The word of God for the people of God. I was thinking of uh, our moment of, of gratitude and grace, and obviously as a Holy Spirit, and we're thinking of Pentecost today. We want to be mindful of the times. I'd like you to think of the places where you were touched by the Holy Spirit, and you may not have even realized that. I was thinking of, of Galatians 5, where Paul talks about the, the gifts of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. When have you ever experienced love or joy? When have you been in the presence of those who have been patient with you or with me um, or found that extra patience when you've needed it? 
when you've seen kindness, gentleness extended to you, where you found the strength to be faithful and to stand up for the, the, the thing that is loving and right and good, experience self-control when you've needed that. Are we aware that the Holy Spirit of God was with us in that time, either with us directly or coming to us through someone else? In this time of gratitude, let us be still for a moment and give thanks to God for those presence, for those touches of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Let us continue also our time of gratitude with the Ministry of Music. Loving God, you provide so much for us, and continually your spirit breathes life, we give you thanks, and offer these works of our labors as we also lift up our lives, 
that your spirit would continue to breathe through us into your world, your good news of life and love, of new life and peace and grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. As we come together in prayer, um, I'd like to share this chorus as a way of centering us in the Holy Spirit. There is much that is going on. And so what I'm going to ask us to do is to just uh, uh, sing that song. Uh, there's a chorus. We'll sing it through once. And then we'll pause a bit. I want to lift up the prayer concerns that we have and that we've been given here at the church. During that time, you're welcome to lift up those uh, that you may have online. If you're here and would like to lift up uh, concerns, you can just pop up on your cell phone and, uh, and also uh, add yours as well. And then we'll sing the uh, uh, praise song one more time. It's just a simple chorus. And we'll pray together. And then uh, we'll sing one last time. So we'll do it three times. Ready? Let us take a deep breath and let us join together in song and in Holy Spirit and in prayer. Loving God who is with us everywhere, we lift up those who grieve. There are many who have lost loved ones, especially over these past years. And we know, O oh Lord, of an empty tomb and a cry he has risen, and yet still there is so much of grief and of missing. Send your comfort and care. We lift up especially this morning Marilyn Simp, Shimp, and family after Al's passing. And we were so blessed to have Al, Al here for a while and for the wonderful ways that he's blessed this congregation. Surround that family, Lord, as they grieve. We continue to lift up prayers for those under siege in Ukraine and for the wars and the battles and the violence. For those each day who face oppression, victims of shootings, victims of racial violence and intolerance, of those who are confronted and put down and threatened simply because they are different. Different of faith, different of gender, different identity, different race. Loving God who created all the world and all of us, help us, O oh Lord, to see your image in one another and teach us to be the peacemakers you call us to be. We pray also for those who may be facing domestic violence in their homes or in their communities or workspaces. Loving God, help us and empower us with your spirit that we may be able to provide safety and to reflect back to others who may need to see and hear your love for them through our lives. Loving God, we lift up those who are facing COVID, it is still going on, it is on the rise, and those who have been dealing with long COVID that has never left. Continue to support those who are ministering to them, your medical personnel, and those people who have been called to serve in so many ways in our hospitals and in our homes and those who are caring for loved ones. We lift up specifically, Lord, this week, Mary Ann, who is in the hospital, Norman, and we celebrate that he's home from the hospital. We lift up Tom for an upcoming procedure. We lift up Chris. And we celebrate that Alexander David and his mother Katie now are both home from the hospital and getting stronger. We lift up Jack and Kelly. We lift up Norma, Joshua's grandmother, who's 
recuperating from a broken hip. For Dodd and Leroy, for Arlene, Susie, Harriet, Tim. We lift up Cliff, Rob and Claire, Val, Don, Sam, Carl, Julie, Lee, and Carol. And those, Lord, who we lift now silently in our hearts and on our chat line. And those, Lord, beyond our knowing. Surround them, Lord, with your blessing and care. God of wind and spirit, God of flame and fire and passion, open up the closed windows and doors in our souls and blow through them this day with new life and vitality, with love and peace and patience and kindness and gentleness, with self-control, that we might live faithfully into the life you are calling us to live and come to the fullness and abundance of all that you are opening before us. Loving God, your life and love and light has always shown in dark places. May we not be afraid of the darkness now, but claim your spirit, your presence, and let it lead our lives, that our lives would become a light to those who need to see your good news. Lead us this day and through this week. And Lord, those we have lifted, touch and lift, let them know we love them and of your love for them. For loving God as an empty tomb is open, there is nothing stronger than your love that truly makes us new. May it be so today. We pray humbly in the name of Jesus who has taught us to pray together by saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Fill me, fill me, fill me. It's probably no surprise we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit this morning and the story of Pentecost and the differences of baptisms. You remember in the beginning of Advent, we always share the story of John, who was out in the wilderness proclaiming a repentance of sin and a birth of new life that was possible and preaching that to actually the Jews as well who were already part of the family and saying, I will baptize you with water for repentance. 
And that was really kind of strange because as Jews understood baptism, it was an initiation rite. People who were already in the church didn't need to be baptized. But this was about a turning. If I want, to, and I believe God wants me to go in this direction and I'm going in this direction, I need to make a change in my life. That's a baptism of repentance. And John said that. I baptize you for repentance, but then he went on. But there's one coming who is more powerful than I. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. There's a difference between turning and desiring to go in the right way and finding the strength and power to go in that direction to transform your life. That's a difference of the presence of the Holy Spirit of God with us. And it is today that we celebrate the day when that Holy Spirit came I'll be reading the story from the book of Acts, chapter 2. Let us open our hearts that we might hear God's word for us. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at the sound of the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one of them heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you. Listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, no. This is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it will be that God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit. And they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and in the signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and smoky mist. Sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. And then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Be to God. It's, it's a long story, but it's an exciting story. It's filled with all kinds of language that is, well, it's not your usual Bible story. It's not that calm kind of thing. No, says Peter, this isn't the usual thing. This is a prophecy that came from the prophet Joel. In those days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Young and old, rich and poor, it doesn't matter. All of God's children, all of those who have been created, all human beings created in the image of God, God will come. That new life is available to all. So I'd like us to think a little bit about what that new life might mean for you and for me as we live in the Spirit and let the Spirit guide us. What does that look like? And one of the first things that hits me, of course, is power. It's a language of power. Images of violent wind and fire that enter the house where they were gathered. Why don't I just pause for a moment about in the house? So oftentimes I used to hear that and see that as a home. But I had heard later on of scholars, and I was reading that actually there are steps on, this, on the temple uh, called the teaching steps, and there was a place of that called the house. And that it very well may not have been a home out in like the residential areas, but it may have been that they were gathered together 
on the steps of the temple. And as a matter of fact, if you go to the next, that's them. Uh, it was really interesting. Our last day, for those of us who were there, at the very last time after we walked for like an entire, what, eight hours, uh, our, our, our guide, Nader, uh, Nader said, uh, I've got to show you this surprise. And it was on top of all of this. And those stairs were that big. We died going up those stairs. But I tell you, the Holy Spirit was there. We got there. But that was the teaching steps. And as you got to the top of it, there was a gateway. If you, if you flip in the next picture. And that, if you can see way down in the corner, that's, that's our, our, our guide, uh, Nader. And he was standing there. You can look and you can almost see a gateway. They, they've walled it off and they put a wall inside of it. But you see that little thing way up there? That was the, the, the crown of what was called the poor gate. That's where the poor came in. And they taught in the steps right in front of that. Jesus would have taught there. And Nader, his, his, his excitement for that day was all the way through the last you know, 10 days that we were together, all I could say is Jesus could have walked in this place. Whatever it was, it was close by. But he's standing on that stone right there, and he said, I'm going to tell you Jesus came through this gate, and his feet stood on that step. That's pretty cool, huh? I digress a little bit, but I, I said to him while we were on the steps, is it possible that that could have been Pentecost? Because there was the house, and he said, yes, I've heard that, and it very well could be. And he said, you know how they talk about many being baptized on that day? Well, if they were there, if you get to the next picture, right next to it, you see those pools there. That's where the ritual washing would be. And so if you go 50 days after Passover in the Jewish tradition, you're at Sukkot. It is one of the major festivals of the time. It would have taken place right around the time of our Pentecost. And Jews would have been there from all around the world. And the disciples may have been sitting on those steps when that Holy Spirit came. And as the people were coming up to come to the temple, suddenly they heard these Galilean fishermen speaking in the language of their own country. And, and take a look at that. It's not unintelligible language there at Pentecost. It is about speaking the language in a way others can understand. We become empowered to take the message to them. Same message, just different language. In the way that we meet, we meet people where we are. Thank you for that. You can take the next one there. But it empowered them to speak the languages of others and to move out. And it empowered them. And, and notice it's not a power to be power over and control. It was a power to proclaim. It was a power to become who God had created them to be. Take a look at Peter. Remember just a couple of weeks before Peter was there by the campfire? And they said, wait a minute, aren't, don't, you, don't you belong with him? Aren't you those Galilean fishermen? And he was by himself. He didn't want to be, I mean, they were crucifying Jesus. He didn't want to be part of that. No, you must have somebody else. Three times he denied him, remember? What happens today? Today, in the power of the Holy Spirit, he stands up. And he says, that's what, well, the, the, the Eugene Peterson words it this way. That's when Peter stood up and spoke out boldly with urgency, boldly and with power. He was empowered to do the work God had called him to do, to become the person God had called him to be. That's what the Holy Spirit does with you and with me. It moves within our hearts and calls us to be what God's calling us to be and to stand up. I was thinking, uh, some of us just came from annual conference. It was a rough one, some difficult things to discuss. And I'm not going to go into all of those at the moment. But I've got to say, I had an immense experience of the Holy Spirit with our bishop because it was rough. And, and, and in the black church tradition, there is something called soul force. Soul force, by the way, is the Holy Spirit in you. And in the middle of all of the turmoil that I saw going in around her and all of the tough things that they had to deal with, there was this calm presence. And I was thinking of Galatians 5 as I was looking at her, and there was love, and there was joy, and there was peace, and there was patience and kindness and gentleness. There was faithfulness and generosity. There was self-control. Very grateful for the bishop that we have in our annual conference. It's great to have someone like that placed in that position during this difficult time. Have you ever seen those kinds of people? 
that in that moment hold on to love, they hold on to faithfulness, and they do not get blown about back and forth. They're solid. When you're looking at that, you're looking at the power of the Holy Spirit. I was uh, leading a men's retreat. I went back and forth on this, but I think I'm going to do it. What the heck? I've only got a couple weeks left, right? You guys are all right for this. We'll still have food afterwards, all right? But the men's retreat a couple of years ago, we did a book entitled We Make the Road by Walking by Brian McLaren. Some of you guys may be here. That was like six years ago. It was a while back. But there was a video clip that he had on the Holy Spirit, and I thought I might just share that with you again. I'm sure all you guys will remember that from six years ago. But if you could pop that up, it may come up on the first screen. It may come up on the second. The Christian community, especially here in America, but to some degree we, we've imported this all around the world, we, we've tended to divide um, into two groups. Conservatives have tended to emphasize the personal dimensions of faith, and liberals have tended to emphasize the ethical and public and social dimension of faith. The results have not been good. When you have people who emphasize a public and ethical social vision of faith, but it isn't supported by a deep spiritual vitality, it can degenerate into kind of an ideology, sometimes into an institutionalism. Sometimes it doesn't sound that different than a political party and ideology. On the other hand, when people try to create a personal spirituality, that doesn't address the realities of God's world that God loves so much, uh, that, that's going to be a deformed and distorted spirituality. It's going to end up very often becoming a kind of tribal religion that exists for the benefits of one group over others or even of certain kinds of powerful pastors and leaders who make a profit uh, over, uh, over the people that they service uh, spiritually. That, that's why I think as we move forward, we need what I sometimes like to call Pentecostalism 2.0. If the Pentecostalism of the last 100 years was about rediscovering the experience of the Holy Spirit, especially what the Holy Spirit can do at the end of long meetings with a lot of loud preaching and motivational music, I'd like to Let me finish off where he was. <laughs> he liked to see us begin to celebrate what happens when that Holy Spirit comes into all the parts of our lives. And he talks about a teacher. What would it be like if that teacher taught their class with the power of the Holy Spirit guiding what they do? Then he talks about a doctor. What if a doctor, when that doctor was in the office working with patients, did what they did with the understanding that God was in the midst of it working and that whatever he did, he did faithfully, or an engineer. If I'm, if I'm working with something, is this something that builds up and how can I make this build up? To begin to see the connection between the personal spirituality and the lived spirituality. That's where I was going to go with that in the moment. And let me take it to the next step of where I was going to go beyond that. That his new vision, it hits me as like everything old is new again because that's exactly what John Wesley was talking about in the 1700s. That there is what he would call a personal piety, but it's not just about me and Jesus. And you guys should know this. We've been talking about it for how many years since you've been a Methodist. But it's about how we live in the world, amen? They're connected. They're connected. John Wesley talked about it in terms of three things, three simple rules he called them. Number one, do no harm. Number two, do all the good you can. See, that's the social piece. That's how we love and share love, right? And then the third thing he would say is stay in love with God. That's the personal piece. Now, actually, in, in the 1700s, he used the words, attend to the ordinances of God which we have no idea what that means today, so that's why we say stay in love with God. But anyways, what he's talking about is that's our personal prayer life. 
That's our worship together. That's our Bible study that we do to see and discern what God may be doing. That's our prayer to discern where the Spirit may be leading. So what we're doing is in line with what God is calling us to do. And so when we do that and then we reach out and do no harm and do all the love and peace that we can to live in that way, suddenly life becomes transforming. Not only for us who become transformed in the leading of the Holy Spirit, but the world that is touched by the love of God through the people of God. Amen? You understand where I'm going with that? That's what ordinances of God, that would, that would be all of the things that we do in worship. For example, communion. Communion, we come together when we remember the love of Christ who laid on a cross for us. That's the love. Said Jesus, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you. That's a pretty tough love. A love that sat there on a cross, looked out at the very people who were crucifying him and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. See, oftentimes as Christians, we hear the Christians are to love their neighbor. No, that's Old Testament. <laughs> Jesus takes it to a different level. You should, he said, you've heard that you should love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I tell you, you shall love your enemy. Pray for those who persecute you. How in the world do you do that? See, I don't think we do. I think the Holy Spirit does that within us. As we attend to the ordinances of God, as we stay in love with God and remember the God who loves us in our brokenness, we can become empowered to love others as they struggle with theirs. Amen? That's what it's about. That's why we come to the table. And as we come to the table, we remember the people that were around this table on that, that good Friday, or that, that Monday, Thursday, were not perfect people. They all failed. They either denied him, turned him in, ran away, and yet the love was still there. And I think that's important for us to remember as we come today because none of us are perfect people, amen? But God uses us. That's the good news. God comes to us in a Holy Spirit and can empower our lives. So as we come to the table today, let us remember that, that there's a gift of a God who loves you, who will not let you go, a God who will empower your life so that you may experience love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and that whole list and abundance and share that with others. Maybe it's so in us. Amen? Let us come to the table. For Christ our Lord invites all to his table who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. So let us confess our sins before God and for one another, and let's do that silently today. I'd like you to just be still. If there are some places that you're wrestling with in your life, lift them up before a God of love. Places where you feel separated from others, lift them up before the one who calls us to reconcile. Let us come to God in our silent prayers. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thank you. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Let us join together in a great thanksgiving. Would you join me as we celebrate the gifts of bread and cup? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us to walk this journey together. You formed us to work together for peace and for justice. You formed us to praise with loving hearts and to proclaim that your reign will come upon this earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. His presence in this world was a beacon of light, showing the way to a life-changing relationship with God. Indeed, he changed people's lives with a word, a touch, a glance, an invitation. And he said that the best thing that we could do was to let go of our lives as we knew them and march with confidence into God's possibilities, into God's future. And he said that when we do this, we would never be alone, for he promised to be with us always through all the change in your power of your word and in the Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread and he gave thanks to you. And he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat, for this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them. And said, drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so because of these world-changing acts of proclaiming, breaking, sharing, we seek to open ourselves for the changes that will offer us the opportunity to move into the world and to break and share our lives, our energies, our love with others. As we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and upon these gifts of bread and wine, and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we might be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Let us serve one another in glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is the Lord's table. It is a gift of God. We do not own it. We are invited to share in it, and that's why it's open to all. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to share by method of intention, and if those who are serving would come forward while I'm finishing some of these pieces here. Um, there, the intention is where you take the piece of bread, don't eat it, dip it into the cup, and share it. If, because of COVID, you do not feel comfortable with that, there is an option, and we do have two tables up in the front here that have those pre-filled cups. Feel free to take one of those with you. Um, if there's a space at the communion rail and you want to kneel and take it there, you can do that, or so move back to your pew and you can, serve, uh, you can, you can share communion that way as well. Either way, um, come and share the love of God. In our church, we used to have a thing on uh, our communion Sundays. We called it Share the Love, remember? We come and receive and then we go and share. Let us do that today. Would those who come up and serve, would you come up with me now? I'm going to ask you to do is to rise and we have a closing hymn this is a day of new beginnings let us sing the hymn as we're coming forward and uh, ushers are you going to direct <coughs> okay we come to the direction of the ushers there'll be two stations one on this side one on that side come up take your bread and cup or the the uh, pre-filled cup and then take uh, the outside aisles to your back to back to your seat we clear we clear okay let's rise <laughs>
Are there others who have not had a chance to receive? If you'd raise your hand, we'll bring those up. Yep. breath. The Holy Spirit is with us. Amen. Let us go forth into the world with confidence and with peace and with grace. It has been a blessing to continue to serve. By the way, this wasn't my last sermon, so it didn't have all that stuff in it. That'll be in another, that's next week. Um, but please know that we all go with God's love, my love as well, and that we go into the world to serve. So let us go with open hearts, open minds, that we might be moved by the Spirit to share the love and the good news. And let all God's children say, Amen. have a great week, everybody.